What's up everybody? Thank you so much for coming by the channel. Today we're going to be going through another daily devotional routine and I'm calling it Digging Deep. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Steve. Thanks for stopping by. While you're here, you're going to get encouraged and equipped to be the Christian you claim to be by discussing scripture and reviewing solid tools and resources to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So again, I posted a, a, a different daily devotional routine, different type, a week or so ago. I'll drop a link down in the description so you can check that one out. This one is a routine that's more for getting deep into the Word, really digging, really doing your Word studies. It's going to require a few extra resources, but not many, um, and a little bit of extra time. So let's get into it and let's take a look at what some of these extra resources that uh, what some of these extra resources are. And again, this is just my suggestions. Um, I, these this isn't the only way to do daily devotionals. It's not the only way to study scripture. I just want to take the opportunity to share with you a couple of the ways that I do it. Um, that way, you might be able to to pick and choose some of the different uh, options and things that I mentioned to include in your own daily devotional. So first, uh, have a decent Bible dictionary, right? Uh, mine happens to be all the way over here. Give me just one second. All right. So have a decent Bible dictionary. I like Muntz's Bible dictionary. Um, I, it's just what I prefer. There's a couple of them out there and I'll drop links to all these resources in the description for you. Uh, Bill Muntz, William Muntz, Dr. Muntz is known as uh, one of the best Greek scholars kind of in our, in our generation. He does a whole lot of work with Greek and so learning from him, uh, Greek and Hebrew and defining some of these words that are hard to define, it, it, it's good to have a good solid Bible dictionary. Number two, have a commentary or two. I have a whole video dedicated to commentaries and which commentaries you should buy. We're not going to get into that. But what I do suggest is having a commentary. So for our example today, let's say we're studying the book of John. Um, I, grab a commentary. I happen to like, uh, this is D.A. Carson. I happen to like the Pillar New Testament. I, there's a couple of them that I like. But again, if you're going to really dig deep into a specific book, such as the book of John, get a, a, a commentary that's entirely on that book. You also can get commentaries such as this one. Okay, here, we'll do this one. This is, um, it's an abridged commentary and it, it's a commentary on the whole New Testament. So as you can see, if this is the whole New Testament and this is the book of John, you're going to get more information uh, with, with single books. And you know, to be honest, if you collect them one at a time, they're between $20 and $50, depending, depending on the book that you're studying and how big it is. That's not really very expensive. I found a lot of these uh, pre-owned or used, to be honest with you. All right, so we have a decent Bible dictionary. We have a commentary or two. Uh, grab yourself an exhaustive concordance. I'm going to grab it here um, and put it to the side, but I want you to see it. Again, this is a good tool to have when you're digging deep. If you don't know how to use this, check out the video down in the description. Maybe I'll drop a card up here um, because... Again, when we're doing our word studies and we want to learn what the Bible has to say to us, that's a good tool, a good resource that we can have. I want to give you a couple of honorable mentions uh, because they're things that you don't have to have, but they're things that I personally use all the time when I'm doing this, when I'm really digging deep and I'm really trying to research a passage of Scripture. Um, and that would be additional study Bibles for one. I have, a, for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that I have reviews on all these study Bibles and they're all different archaeology, chronological, gospel transformation, even just like the Open Bible, the MacArthur Bible. You know, you don't have to have all of them, um, but I'll tell you there's a few that are fantastic to have to help you in your study. One of those is going to be the Net Full Notes Bible. I have a Net Full Notes Bible, and the Full Notes, it's a little different. It's not a typical study Bible. It's the translator's notes. It's a full Bible full of translator's notes. And that's going to help you understand why they translated what they translated uh, the way that they did. Also, another uh, study Bible or study Bible reference that I suggest having is the Apologetic Study Bible. Why? Because 
the apologists that have gone through and made comments on the text that you're reading are making them from a, a defense of the Christian faith point of view. And they might bring up things that you've never thought of before. They might help you see and interact with scripture in ways that you've never thought of before. Other, um, a few other honorable mentions would be like an illustrated Bible dictionary or illustrated Bible encyclopedia. Um, there's a couple of them. Zondervan puts, everybody kind of puts one out, but you know, I, they can be helpful. I'm a, I happen to be a, somewhat of a visual learner. Um, and so stuff like that helps me a little bit. And uh, trusted websites. I'm not going to give you a whole list of websites that I trust, but have a couple of trusted websites. One of them that I like if I have questions is Got Questions. And I will include that one down there because you know what? The guys, the theology of the men and women that run that site uh, is uh, pretty good. I, I, don't, I usually don't have a ton of trouble with the stuff that they say. And either, either way, it, it's just a lot of times it's a definition. It's them explaining, taking two or three paragraphs to explain a thought, an idea, a word, uh, a, a, a lifestyle, whatever the question that you have that revolves around the Bible. They've taken time a lot of times to answer those and then give you additional helps. Uh, so that's fantastic. And then maybe even a survey book or two. So survey books are just what they sound like. It's a survey of the whole New Testament or the whole Old Testament. Um, and this is going to give you a good a bit of background on kind of the whole thing. What's going on in the whole Old Testament uh, or what's going on in the whole New Testament and how we read that. Because that information as you're digging deep is going to become important. You want to know who wrote it. Okay, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. But you want to know who wrote it, who was receiving it, why. All right. So now that we have a few resources out in front of us, um, again, this is this is going to sound funny, uh, but these book stands, and maybe you'll see that in just a minute, are, are great, fantastic resources to have. Have a have a space to write. Um, I usually take my notes when I'm doing stuff like this on the computer and I have a video that explains how I do that uh, because it, it's a little bit longer, but it, once you get it set up, I can take as many notes as I want in Google Docs and I can drop uh, maps and illustrations and websites all in there and that helps me a whole lot. If you write quicker than you type, have a good notebook so you can take notes because you're going to want to re reference this stuff and write down the things that you're thinking of. All right. So now that we have those out of the way, kind of some of the additional resources that you may want, uh, what does it look like? How does that happen? Well, like I said in the last video, number one and number two rule is have a plan. Okay. If you don't have a plan, you're not going to be able to follow through with your plan. And more often than not, you're going to sit down not knowing what you're doing. You're going to read a couple of verses of scripture and then move on. Or you're going to get a text message and lose concentration. That's just human nature, right? So have a plan. Okay, I'm going through the book of John. I'm going to go through it systematically, verse by verse. Uh, whatever your plan is, have it. Know what it is. Know what you want to accomplish. I want to accomplish reading through all four gospels in the next 40 days. Great. There's the plan, okay? Number two, set yourself up for success. As you've watched me, I haven't had to roll very far to gather my equipment. This particular uh, devotional routine isn't going to be the best routine for sitting on the couch because we're doing more than just reading the Bible, okay? You're going to want a space that you can write, that you can type, that you can set your books up because as you're about to see, I'm going to set up books all over my desk here as I'm pretending to go through this devotional routine and it might get a little crowded. So have a plan and set yourself up for success such as, look, little teeny set of drawers, pens, Bible pens, highlighters, auxiliary pens, um, funny little things like the proper way to underline something is with a ruler. Let me tell you, you know, unless you have an amazingly straight hand, using this saves me so much time and energy and effort. Uh, and it looks nice in my Bible. When I go back to read it, I didn't cross out a bunch of words. So first and foremost, as you're getting started with your routine is pray. I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, spending time in the word, the one and only and best way to truly learn is by the Holy Spirit, softening our hearts, opening our minds and showing and teaching us what, uh, what we are to learn. Okay. And we, we do that by prayer. We blanket our entire devotional uh, life in prayer and then our, the rest of our entire day. 
Um, so pray, pray, pray. Ask the Lord. I, I don't spend a ton of time at the beginning of my devotional time praying. I spend more time during and after praying. And that's because I just, I want to open up my heart. I want to open up my mind and let God speak to me. Then in this particular routine, I, I like, I highly suggest reading through the book that you're going through a couple of times. I have my Bibles sitting right here, right? So New King James, um, ESV, and I, just behind me in this general area, I have others Read through it a couple of times in one sitting, especially if you're reading New Testament. A lot of the New Testament letters, not a lot, a lot of them are letters, um, but they're pretty short. Most of them you can do in 20 minutes, uh, and you need to read through the whole thing from start to end, because when's the last time you sat down and read a letter from your friend or an email, and you only read two sentences, and you came back, and then you read the next paragraph? That's just not the way that our brain works. Well, again, a lot of the letters, especially in the New Testament, are smaller and you can sit down and read them. Now, if you're studying Psalms and you want to sit down and read it all the way through, I have done this. It's going to take you a while. So that's going to take you hours to accomplish. So some of the bigger books, you might not be able to read all in one sitting. But you do need to read through it plenty of times. So let's say again, we're reading the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John takes less than an hour to read all the way through. If you just sit down and do it, it takes less than an hour. So I suggest you do it in multiple different uh, translations and read it all the way through. This is going to take you a couple of days to set up your study. Personally, I read the like the New Living. My first couple of passes are New Living Translation and the Christian Standard Bible. I love those for this because they're easy to understand. They're easy to sit and read. When I study, I read from and study from the English Standard Version and the New King James Version usually. So that's four passes. Okay, read it four times all the way through beginning to end. That really is not a whole lot. Um, and just be be observational about what you're reading. So we're going to read the book of John. Okay, you're going to get it out and you've read it a couple times. Maybe the first couple times you read it, you can do it on the couch. Okay, but you now have your Bible and you've opened up and, and we're studying the book of John. Okay, and you read it. So you have one of your Bibles here. Chances are you read it twice. So you're going to have a whole second Bible. Um, let's choose a smaller Bible for this particular illustration. So you're going to have a second Bible. Why? Because you're going to do some comparing. Comparing and contrasting how different, uh, how different translators translated different things. Okay, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We're in John. We have our Bibles to compare back and forth. Now what do we do? Make sure that while you're getting started, you know a couple of things. And this is where your surveys are going to come in handy. Even, um, And I'll drop a link to a couple of these books, uh, How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. That's going to give you an understanding of what the book is. Things that you want to know. Who's writing the book? Why were they writing it? Was there a reason? Um, who's receiving the book? Is there a reason that they're receiving the book? Where were they in the world? Um, what were they doing? What was happening around them on the globe in uh, history? What was happening when this book was being written and when it was being received? Okay, those are important things to understand because those are going to help us understand what's going on with the passage. The, the passage, the Bible, cannot mean something to you that the original writer or the original receivers did not would not have understood it to mean. Uh, so what that means is as we're reading through it, you know, there there's a context of what's going on here. And you can read almost any verse in the Bible and twist it around to mean whatever you want it to mean. And that's just not the truth. That's not what we're setting out to do here. We're setting out to let the Bible speak for itself and dig really, really super deep. Um, for example, and here's your homework, go research the verse Jeremiah 29, 11. spend time doing this in order to know what is happening in Jeremiah 29, 11, You need to read the entire book of Jeremiah. You might need to read the entire old Testament because that's extremely important to know whether Jeremiah 29, 11 is a promise to you or a promise to somebody else. And is that important? There's your homework for today. All right. So now that we have a good background of information for our book, 
maybe, uh, again, our study Bible. We're reading through the ESV study Bible. They usually have a page or two at the beginning of your study Bible. I use my study Bibles for this all the time uh, to help me understand who was writing it, when were they writing it, where were they writing it, who are they writing it to. Now you're just going to start slowly going through the book. This is not a race. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You're going to just start reading at verse 1. Start reading small passages, um, small sections at a time, and take note of some things. Here's where your note-taking ability, your highlighters, your underlining. Some people underline in different colors. Uh, that's fantastic to do. Uh, so take note of any words you don't fully understand. This is going to help you with that. You don't know what a word means? Look it up. If you don't know it, look it up. So you're going to look up a word. I actually keep my Bible as I'm studying. Um, kind of there. I can still write in it if I want to. It's not super uncomfortable to do, but that's my main study tool. Uh, have an additional book stand. What do you know? Right there. These are 10 or 15 bucks. Have an additional book stand. Why? Because you're going to be reading through your commentary. I study on my computer. Um, you're going to be reading through your commentary. Now I can access everything. It's right here, right at my hands, right at my fingertips. And we're reading through the book of John. You're gonna, not going to need this yet because my suggestion is, is to save the commentaries till the end. But there it sits. There's my second translation. Look, you're starting to pile up books looking like you're in a library studying something for real, putting some effort into it. Okay. Um, and again, your honorable mentions. These suckers are huge. Uh, so you can keep that off to the side if you're going to do a word study. Take note of any words that you don't fully understand. Take note of words that get used multiple times. Um, you might underline them, okay? As you're going through, you underline, man, he says this word a lot. Whatever the word happens to be, he says this word, he says this phrase, he says this term. Highlight it, underline it, circle it, draw lines back and forth. However that works in your brain to remember. And then sit and think and meditate about it. Why is he saying this so much? He says it more than once. That If we say something more than once, it's, it's usually ends up being important, right? All right. Um, what does the verse or the passage you're reading reveal about God's character? These, these next couple are things that sometimes get left out, and that's kind of sad. So what does it reveal about God's character? Um, the Bible reveals something. Even if it's you're reading through Leviticus or you're reading through Mosaic Law, and you're not the nation of Israel, so the law doesn't technically apply to you, can we learn something from it? Yeah, we can. It reveals who God is. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to the verses of the Bible because this is his word to us. And just like every word we says reveals something about us, it reveals our heart condition. It reveals how much we love those around us. It, re it reveals what our morals and values are. Okay, This is God's word to us and it reveals the things about his character that he wants us to know. And those things are incredibly important. Take note. Okay. How does this verse or passage relate or inform us about Christ and the gospel? Because the gospel is in there. If you're reading through patches of scripture and you're not seeing the gospel, keep reading it over and over and over because this is God's redemption plan for us. Uh, and Christ is the main character, not us. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, we're not the main focus of the Bible. Um, Christ is the main character and God is the main character. And as we read it, we need to be looking for those things. We need to be looking for the gospel. And then how does it apply to me? Uh, because it is applicable. The things that we learn are applicable. Um, back to Le Le Levitical law, because people like to bring this stuff up all the time. Are we allowed to eat shellfish now? Because Mosaic law tells us uh, we can't eat shellfish. People will bring that up. Can we eat shellfish? Yes, we can. Go research why that's true. Uh, but what do we learn about eating shellfish or wearing clothes that are two different uh, types of cloth? Uh, what can we learn about God's character from that? Well, one of the things I'll give you a little tip off is that God cares about every single thing we do. Uh, he is Im immediately involved and cares a great deal about every aspect of our life, including what we put on our mouths and what we put on our bodies. And that's important. We need to be able to see those things as we're reading through scripture. 
Now, I, I was saying in the beginning, as you come across words, research that. What does that mean? This is what that means. So grab your, grab your little additional helps here. Maybe look up a website. Maybe look up your, uh, the definition. A lot of times, especially in months here, the definition is going to give you more verses here um, to check out and to go, to go research. Your reference Bible will have references in it to other places that either something was used or this is a quote from the Old Testament. Look it up. Now's the time in this digging deep routine to spend time looking it up, researching it. How does Paul use the word justified? Well, in order to use, in order to know how Paul defines the word justified, one way to help us understand that is to look up every, the word justified every time Paul uses it throughout the entire New Testament. And what does he mean? That's going to help us learn. And this is your opportunity to do those. And these references that we talk about on this channel all the time, your reference Bible, your study Bibles, um, your Bible dictionaries, your concordances, those are going to help you do that. Those are going to help you understand the word of God. Let me encourage you, go through it slowly. Don't move on until you understand the passage that you're reading through. Maybe you only get through two or three verses a day in an hour. Maybe it's one verse in one hour. There might be times that you spend your entire hour or two or three researching one word. God's going to bless that time. Uh, I, I truly believe because it's been true for me. God's going to bless the time you spend researching his word, understanding what he is saying to us, using the tools and resources that we have as Christians in the year 2021. Okay. Look up maps, look up illustrations uh, to help you understand what's going on and don't leave a passage until you really understand it. Meditate on the verse, um, on a verse or a section that stand out. Maybe you've read three or four or five verses or a passage, you know, 10 verses of scripture and you've been going through it for an hour or two or a day or two. Meditate on, on one of the verses, one of the passages that stand out to you. What does that mean? It means pray through it. It means think about it. As you move through your day, when your devotional time is over, when this all starts getting closed up, when your devotional time is over, continue to think about that. Continue to think about these verses and, and let, let them soak in throughout the day. Uh, let the Holy Spirit work in you and teach you what those things mean. Pray continually throughout this process. I've said, and this is something that I had to teach myself, is to stop and pray anytime I feel like I should stop and pray. Instead of getting too focused on um, reading through all the stuff that we were reading through, or you know, if, if, the, if you feel a tug to sit and pray about something, I suggest you take notes, uh, maybe on a little separate sheet of paper, write a little note that comes up while you're studying. Maybe it's clarity. Maybe you need some clarity on a passage. Pray about that. Take the time to pray about it. Maybe it's a person that whatever it is you're reading puts a person or their situation or you and your situation. Write that down. That is something that's going on in your own life. Maybe it's, maybe it's a praise. Maybe it's one of the many, many, many blessings that happen in your life. And maybe it's one that you haven't been thinking of uh, so much lately. Write it down and pray about it. Make a note. This is going to take a little bit of time. Like I said in the beginning, this is not something you're going to be able to sit down and do in 10 minutes a day. Uh, this is this is digging deep, getting into the word, really sitting under it and letting the Bible speak for itself, which means reading through it. Now, I mentioned this in the very beginning. Let your commentary be last. Uh, I, I want to make sure that I'm emphasizing that you... Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you first. Sit and read through the book that you're going through three or four or five times. Read through the passages of Scripture a couple times. Sit through it. Read through it. Look words up so you understand. Because if you don't know what a word means, it's hard to, you know, that's why we have these resources. But then before you jump over to, to your commentary and just start reading what somebody else thinks, what D.A. Carson thinks, let the Holy Spirit work and teach you. Then kind of after you've done that for a while, after you sit and you've exhausted your possibilities, then open up your commentaries and start reading. What does this guy think? Well, how does he interpret uh, the scripture? Maybe he has a little bit something to offer you uh, regarding the Greek, uh, how, how the verse comes across in the Greek, or what was happening contextually that's going to help you understand the verse a little bit more. 
hey, thanks for watching. I know this was a longer one, but this is a longer devotional. And, you know, you don't, again, you don't have to implement all of this. This isn't the way to study the Bible. This is one of the ways that I do it. Uh, and oftentimes, this is a, a rabbit hole style devotional. And that's what I love about it. When I have time to dedicate, I try to spend at least an hour for this particular method because more often than not, I start getting excited. And the more time you spend in the word, the more time uh, for me, again, personally, you're going to get excited about what you're learning and it's going to be really, really hard to stop. I, I love that. I love when that happens because I love learning and I, and I love hearing what God has to say to me and maybe learning how to, uh, maybe he teaches me how to bring that across to somebody else or how to share the gospel with somebody else. Um, and spending time really studying and digging deep helps with that. If you found this um, video, if you found value in this video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. It really helps YouTube put it in front of others that uh, may be interested in it as well. Here's a couple of other videos that you may be interested in um, checking out. And we have plenty of Bible reviews coming up. So make sure you're subscribed and that you stay tuned because we got good, solid resources, good Bible reviews coming out in the next couple of weeks. And don't forget... Be who you claim to be.